Hi everyone, welcome back to Barter Hordes. My name is Robert. I'm here to do a review today of um, a modern classic, The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. Uh, it's been a little bit over a week since my last video. It's been kind of a, it's been a rough week for reading uh, here. Um, first of all, I didn't expect to, but I kind of got wrapped up in the Winter Olympics. Um, I'm interested in the events like cross-country skiing and speed skating and biathlon. Um, not so much hockey and a little bit of curling. Um, figure skating, not so much at all. But I ended up watching more of that than I expected to, so that slowed me down a little bit. And then of course, here on Valentine's Day, we had the horrible shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School here in Broward County. And um, I didn't know any of the victims personally, but I know several of their teachers at Stoneman Douglas. And it's been a really rough week for people here in Broward County and around the country. And so for two days, I basically was in the fetal position on my couch, alternating between tears and just sheer anger at the stupidity of our lack of gun laws. Uh, not to get political, I'll save that for another rant, but that really slowed me down reading too. And then third, probably the most direct reason why this was a slow week is the book I chose to read, The Golden Notebook, is long. It's 635 pages of fairly small print. And to be honest, not enjoying it very much just made it even a longer slog through that uh, lengthy book. So what's the book about? Uh, this is not my first Doris Lessing book, but it's the first time I've read anything by her in a long time. Uh, and this is considered her, her masterpiece, her classic. Uh, the Golden Notebook came out in 1962. She wrote it in the late 50s um, when she was living in London. Um, it's the story of Anna Wolf, who is a novelist. She had a very successful debut novel based on her experiences in Central Africa, what at the time was called Rhodesia, uh, during World War II. And ever since she wrote that first novel, she's been blocked and she's been struggling. And she's tried to compartmentalize her life in four different notebooks that she writes in because she can't start on a second novel. Uh, the first one, her black notebook, is really about her career as a writer. Um, she gives us a lot of the information about her experiences in Africa uh, that made up the topic of her first novel and also her experiences since the book came out uh, with movie producers and television producers wanting her to sell the rights to them but she never does because she knows how they're going to change it and she just doesn't want it changed. Uh, the second notebook, her red notebook, uh, and these symbols are pretty important, um, is about politics. She, for a time, was a member of the Communist Party, uh, and she's writing about the politics of the party, she's writing about the people that she's met, and ultimately her growing dissolution with the, dis, uh, disillusion with the party and her decision to leave the party, although she never completely abandons the ideals of communism, it's just the party itself that she has a problem with. The third notebook, the yellow notebook, is where she tries out various new writings. And she has a long passage in there, which is almost like another novel, but it's very much based on her own life and her friend Molly, who's an actor. Uh, so Anna becomes Ella in that book. And we go through a lot of the experiences that Anna has experienced in her life through this character of Ella. And then the fourth notebook, uh, the blue notebook, serves kind of as a diary of the events in her life and her daughter Janet, who's 11 or 12 at different times during the novel. It's towards the end of the book, she decides after her very last affair um, that she can't divide her life any longer. And so she puts the four notebooks away and buys a new one, the golden notebook, which is the last part of the novel itself and this, what her attempts to reintegrate all the different parts of herself in the final notebook. This book is praised by everybody. I mean, Lessing won the Nobel Prize in 2007. Uh, she's written, I think, 30 some odd novels. I haven't read that many of them, so I can't really say. Um, and this book itself has been praised as a forerunner of both uh, postmodernism and also of feminist writing. 
and it's, it's kind of interesting. Let's, let's deal with the feminist writing first. Lessing didn't really see this as a feminist book, at least not when she was writing it. She understands why people have adopted it as um, a beginning feminist book afterwards. Um, it's very much about the relationships between men and women and how poisoned they are, especially when the women are trying to deal with a male-dominated society. But I think the reason Lessing doesn't see it completely as feminist, and one of the big problems I have seeing it as an argument in femi feminism, is her characters are stereotypes. Every single man in this book is exactly the same. First of all, he's married. Second, he cheats on his wife. And third, he's an asshole. Every single one of them. And Emma, um, I'm sorry, not Emma, Anna, Anna and Molly have a series of affairs with these same types of men and they always end badly. And so it's almost too easy a way to make men look bad and to make women look put upon. And I don't think Lessing is really trying to do it that way, but that's what it has become. So I have a little bit of problem with the characterization of the people. Anna is as neurotic as they come. And this book is partly about the breaking up of things, the breaking up of Anna's personality. She's on the verge of madness a couple of times, uh, the breaking up of relationships, the breaking up of the Communist Party and politics around the world. Breaking up is a big issue in this in this book, and Anna talks about break up all the time. Um, and so it's it's an interesting book in terms of its structure. And this is why it's often seen as a forerunner of postmodernism. Because she has compartmentalized her life, there's a lot of fractured chronology. She recycles the names of characters from her real life into her fictional writings. And so it gets very confusing for the reader to try to remember this mammoth cast of characters because they all are so similar and they share names and locations and it, it just gets really confusing like a postmodern book does. Uh, the thing that really makes it, I think, important in terms of postmodernism is her focus on the language. One of the things postmodernism does is it stops seeing language as an objective description of reality and instead language is seen as creating reality itself and Lessing is definitely going in this direction with Anna's character. Um, Anna goes on and on and on and it never stops when she starts thinking about life. Anna's big issue with her own um, struggles with her uh, sanity is that she's incapable of living life because she has to stop and analyze everything that happens in her life way more deeply than it warrants. Um, it was really frustrating for me as a reader. Uh, the word to use for Anna is neurotic. She uses that word herself in her, one of her own descriptions. And she's just so frustrating to read because she can write a four page essay on absolutely nothing. There's one passage in there early in the book where she spends four pages talking about the philosophical ramifications of grasshoppers mating. And it's like that throughout the whole book. And so I think it's a really important book. I think it's a very difficult book to enjoy. Um, I tend, and I admit this freely, I tend to be a plot reader. Uh, I want a story. Even if it's in a philosophical book, I want a story. Thomas Hardy manages that. But the postmoderns don't care about story. They care about game playing. They care about elitism. And this is an elitist book. All the characters are elitist. They're all also hateful. I may have just lost you for a second. My battery's dying. Uh, they're all hateful. And And it's just really difficult to like this book. Um, so important book, yes. Likeable book, not for me. I absolutely dislike this book. Um, if it hadn't been one of my must read books from some of the lists, I'm a, I'm a list reader. If it hadn't been one of those must read books on some of my lists, I probably would have put this one down after 50 or 60 or 70 pages. And nothing changed in the next 600 pages. Trust me, it's, it's exactly the same all the way through. She just goes on and on and on. Um, and I'm sure somebody out there, well, maybe not watching this video because my channel is so small, but somebody out there 
this is their favorite book. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend you. I just find it tedious. Um, absolutely hated the experience over the, the three or four days um, going on. It's probably 26, 27 hours worth of reading. Um, and it, it just seems like it went on forever. So not my favorite read. Um, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I'm going to pick something short as kind of a way to regenerate my enthusiasm after this one. Uh, I've also been tagged by Leah over at Hide and Seek uh, um, on the Future Classics tags. I've been thinking about some of my responses for that and I hope to get to that video later this week. But until the next time, I'll see you soon and I hope you have a good weeding rate. Bye.